Okay, everybody have a seat. You brought a bear. Very good. And you brought Chippy. Okay. All right. Everyone get settled. Get comfortable. Can you all do this? Very good. We're all here together, together, together. We're all here together at story time today. And my friends are your friends, and your friends are my friends. We're all here together at story time today. Good job. Very nice. Okay, everybody. Some of the stories that we're going to hear today are about food. Food. I love food. Who loves food? I love food. So when we're getting ready to eat our food, what are some of the things we should think about doing before we eat? Wash our hands. Very good. You did it. You did too. So let's hold out our hands and get ready to wash them with soap and warm water. Getting ready to wash, wash, wash your hands, wash them every day. Top and bottom and in between, then rinse those germs away. Wash, wash, wash your hands, wash them every day. Top and bottom and in between, then rinse those germs away. Oh, good. See, now we have nice, clean hands. We're ready for some food. So open your ears so we're ready for some food stories. Sit up nice and tall. Sit up nice and tall. Put your hands in your lap. And get ready for our very, very first story. What's this on the cover of our first story? A dinosaur. This book is called How Do Dinosaurs Eat Their Food? Hmm. By Jane Yolen. Let's find out how dinosaurs eat their food. Maybe. We'll find out. Okay. How do dinosaurs eat their food? Well, here's a dinosaur right here. What do you think he's eating? Can you tell? It's kind of small. Uh, uh, ice cream? I think it's ice cream. I think you're right. He's already got some on his chest. Oh, he's got to be careful. Now, how does a dinosaur eat all of his food? Does he burp? Oh, does he belch or make noises quite rude? Bless you. Does he pick at his cereal, throw down his cup, hoping to make someone else pick it up? Is that very nice? No. No. That's not bad. Does he fuss? Does he fidget? Or does he squirm in his chair? No. No. What's happening here? He's 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 flying. Hi. Oh, great. Yes. He's tipping in his chair. He's fussing. He's fidgeting. He's squirming. Does he flip his spaghetti high into the air? Is that how you eat spaghetti? No. No. Is this going to make a mess? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. This spaghetti noodles looks like. Does a dinosaur yeah. glare? Does a dinosaur glare? No. When he's grumpy? Mm. Mm -mm. How does a dinosaur eat all his food? Does he spit out his broccoli, partially chewed? No. Oh, no. Oh. He spit out his broccoli. He did. Partially chewed. He shouldn't do that. Does he bubble his milk? Yeah. No. Bubble, 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 bubble. No, oh, he shouldn't do that. Yes. Does he stick beans up his nose? No. Oh, my goodness. So rude. Does he squeeze juicy oranges with his great big toes? No. Oh, do you see that? He's squeezing the oranges with his toes. Oh, yuck. Not good at all. Well, of course he does it. A dinosaur says please and thank you. And he sits very still. That's nice. It's very nice. Those are good manners. 
He eats all before him with smiles and goodwill. He's very, very nice at the table. He tries every new thing, at least one small bite, even if it's strange. He's very polite. He makes no loud noises because loud noises aren't polite. Mm -mm. And he never drops anything onto the floor. And after he's finished, he asks for some more. He says, please, may I have some more? So eat up, eat up, little dinosaur. That is the end of our story. So were those dinosaurs at the end, were they being nice? Were they being polite? Were they showing good table manners? Yeah. Yes, banana, they were. Banana, no, the first part, they were being naughty. Yes, Cora? Um, if I had the little baby dinosaur and a big mama dinosaur. Really? And, uh, daddy dinosaur, there was mm -hmm. homie and I feed them drama. Really? Strawberry. Really? Strawberries? Can you do this? Strawberries are pretty good. Strawberries are good for dinosaurs. Can you wiggle your fingers? Wiggle them. Wiggle them. Stretch them out a little bit farther. Stretch them out as far as they can go. Way out far. Way out far. Now show me five sausages on your hand. Can you show me five sausages? Five little sausages sitting in a pan. The pan got hot and one went bam. Now we, how many do we have left? Four. Four little sausages sitting in a pan. The pan got hot and one went bam. How many left? Three. Three little sausages sitting in the pan. The pan got hot and one went bam. Two little sausages sitting in the pan. The pan got hot and one went bam. One little sausage sitting in the pan. The pan got hot and one went bam. How many sausages? Zero. Zero. Zero little sausages sitting in the pan. The pan got hot and the pan went bam. And everything's gone. Everything is gone. And now it's time for our next story. This story is called Wild Boars Cook by Meg Rossoff and Sophia Blackwell. So these are our wild boars. How many wild boars do you see? Four. Four. One, two, three, four. Now, where are the wild boars sitting? In a bowl. They're sitting in a bowl. A giant one. A giant bowl. Not a big enough bowl to fit four wild boars. That's a pretty big bowl. They have wild down It uh, looks like this might be the batter for whatever it is they're cooking. I wonder what that help. might be. Help. Soup. Help. Soup? Help. Maybe. How big? How big? All those boars? Well, maybe their bowl is really big, too. Let's find out. So wild boars cook. Let's find out how this goes. This is Boris, and this is Morris. This is Horace, and this is Doris. They are wild boars. Doris is right there. These wild boars are bossy and selfish and stinky and hungry. What's the selfish boar doing? He's sitting on something. What is he sitting on? Can you tell? He's sitting on a cookie jar. If he's a selfish boar, why is he sitting on a cookie jar? Maybe so other people can't, other boars can't get cookies too. These boars, they're troublesome. Boris is so hungry, he could eat 35 hot dogs. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of hot dogs. And he could eat a whole bushel of bonbons too. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Boris, Boris is bad. What did he do? Make a mess. He made a huge mess from all those hot dogs and all those candies. Boris, he's so wild. 
Um, now Morris, Morris is so hungry that he could eat a pineapple upside down cake, 10 pickles, and a boot. <laughs> Would you eat a boot? No. No, boots aren't tasty. And Morris goes, munch, munch, munch. Naughty, naughty Morris. Now Horace, Horace is so hungry. He could eat a pizza as big as the moon. Really, really big. That's a big one. Horrid, Horace. What's Horace doing right here? Eating it. He's eating the pizza. Where is he standing while he's eating the pizza? In the box. In the pizza box? Do you stand in a pizza box when you're eating your pizza? No, no. because it's because the box is too small. Oh, very messy too. Now Doris. Doris is so hungry, she is eating a cookbook. She's eating a cookbook. Doris is eating and eating and eating. But wait, Doris finds a delicious recipe in this cookbook. It's a recipe for the biggest, the messiest, the stickiest, the gooeyest, the chewiest, most delicious pudding in the whole wide world. Watch out everybody, because wild boars are making a massive pudding. A massive pudding. That's really big. So very first, they measure out all of their ingredients. We need 10 cups of sugar, shouts Morris. We need 500 chocolate covered chocolates, says Boris. We need a gross of donuts, says Horace. What's Horace doing with all those donuts? Uh, them? I know, it looks like he's wearing them, like jewelry. Have a seat, Yakko. Have a seat so everybody can see. So, and then Doris yells, we also have to put in lots and lots of broccoli. And everybody stops and they stare at Doris. Broccoli? In a massive pudding? Doris thinks about it for a minute. And then she says, oh, sorry guys, I got excited. So, almost all of the ingredients that they have gathered go into the massive pudding bowl. And once they're in that massive pudding bowl, Boris says, wait, it's too dry. Oh. It's too small, says Morris. Oh gosh, I'm hungry, howls Horace. So Doris added one and a half puddles, puddles, huh? A bucket of squishy, squishy butter, 26 bananas and a squid. A squid? Are squids squishy? A little. Everything is in the bowl and Doris starts to whisk very briskly. She's stirring up all that batter. What is she using to stir up all her batter? Tail. Tail. Is that sanitary? Yes. No. They put, the, um, snake in there. they put the squid in there too. Can you see the little squid tentacle sticking out? Uh -huh. Oh boy, this is going to be one crazy massive pudding. Uh -huh. So they whisk and they whisk and they whisk and all the boars join in, stirring and stirring. And then they throw it in the oven and it cooks and it cooks and out comes the most beautiful, massive pudding in the whole wide world. Yeah. And this is what it looks like. Here it is. Is that massive? Yeah. It is really, really massive. What do we see here? It looks nice. Donuts, and what's this? Someone saw this. The squid's head on the top and bananas and tentacles. Oh my goodness, this is one massive pudding. It looks, it looks, it looks so, crazy. I know, it does look crazy. And after they did all that work and they baked up the most massive pudding in the whole wide world, do you think that Boris and Morris and Horace and Doris sat at the table with their hands folded, their napkins in their laps? Did they pass the biggest piece to the wild boar on their left? Did they say thank you and chew with their mouths closed? Do you think all the wild boars acted like that at the table? No. No. You're right. They didn't, of course not. They gulped. 
and they grabbed and they smashed and they snatched and they pushed and they prodded and they choked and they chewed and they ate that massive pudding in 10 seconds flat. They decorated at night. All gone. They decorated at night. They did decorate it nice, but now they gobbled it all up. That's not nice. No. And all the wild boars lay in a wild boar heap. That was delightful, said Doris. Delicious, groaned Morris. Divine, burped Horace. It was my idea, said Doris. And they all lived happily ever after for five whole minutes. And after those five whole minutes, I'm still hungry, cried Boris. Oh, I'm still starving, moaned Morris. Everyone got more than me, howled Horace. And Doris said, I have an idea. Don't worry, I think I found another recipe for a massive cookie. And that is where we end our story. What do you think the wild boars did? Did they make a massive cookie? Yeah. What would they put in their massive cookie, do you think? Uh, chocolate. Maybe some chocolate? What other wild boar things? More chocolate pudding for their massive cookie? More chocolate? This is a very chocolatey cookie. A squid and strawberries? A strawberry squid chocolate massive cookie? Oh my goodness, that's crazy! Ooh, a domino effect. So I want everyone to show me five speckled frogs. If you had five speckled frogs on your hand, how many fingers would you hold up? Five! Five fingers! You know, what kind of things do speckled frogs eat? Flies. Flies. Yummy, yummy flies with their big, long frog tongues. Five green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious flies. Yum, yum. One frog jumped in the pool where it was nice and cool. Now we have four green speckled frogs. Four green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious flies. Yum, yum. One frog jumped in the pool where it was nice and cool. Now we have how many frogs? Three. Three green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious flies. Yum, yum. One frog jumped in the pool where it was nice and cool. Now we have how many frogs? Two. Two green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious flies. Yum, yum. One frog jumped in the pool where it was nice and cool. Now we have how many frogs? One. One green and speckled frog. One green and speckled frog sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious flies. Yum, yum. Then he jumped in the pool where it was nice and cool. Now we have no green speckled frogs. All gone. So I want everybody to stand up. Stand up. And reach for the ceiling. Reach for the ceiling. And reach for the floor. And reach for the windows. And reach for the door. Now reach for the ceiling. And reach for the floor. And reach for the windows. And reach for the door. Now stand on one leg. Stand on one leg. Oh, oh, careful, don't tip over though. Oh no! Stand on the other leg. Oh, keep standing on the other leg. Now stop your feet. Now stop, stop your feet. Be really still. Now stop your feet. <laughs> now stop stopping your feet. Be really still. Now turn around just once. Turn around once more time. Turn around one more time. Now shake your shoulders. Shake your shoulders. Now shake your knees. Shake your knees. Shake your shoulders and your knees. Shake your shoulders and your knees. Shake your shoulders and your knees. Now slowly, slowly shake yourself down to the ground, right down on the ground, and taking a really deep breath. You want to put that right here? Take a deep breath in, 
and let a deep breath out. Put your hands in your lap. Make sure your ears are nice and open so you can hear our last story for the day. This story is about a bear. This story is called Bear Wants More by Karma Wilson. We have Bear has been sleeping all winter long, snoozing away in his little bear lair. And now that it's warm outside, Bear is up. And how do you feel when you wake up in the morning? Do you feel maybe a little hungry? I feel hungry when I wake up. So does Bear. You're really hungry? Yeah. So Bear wants more. When springtime comes in his warm winter den, a bear wakes up very hungry and thin. Oh, he says as he stretches. He waddles outside and he roots all around. He digs and he paws fresh shoots from the ground. He's grounding up in the ground, chewing something on the ground. Tasty, tasty grasses. He nibbles on his lawn till the last blade is gone. Everything's gone. But Bear wants more. Now Mouse scampers by with his acorn pail. Come along, Mouse squeaks to Strawberry Vale. Ooh, strawberries. So up Mouse hops onto Bear's big back and they tromp through the woods for their fresh fruit snack. The berries grow sweet, and they eat, eat, eat. But the bear wants more. Chippy wants more, too. The noon sun glows, and along hops hair. Good day, friend mouse, he says. Hello, friend bear. I'm hungry, roars bear. And Hare says, follow me. There's a fresh clover patch by the cottonwood tree. Hmm, clover. So they nibble on their lunch with a crunch, crunch, crunch. But the bear wants more. Now Badger shuffles by with his brand new fishing pole. <gasps> There's a fine fish feast at the old fishing hole, he says. They head to the pool, and they sit by the shore, and Bear catches fish, but after he catches fish, he still wants more. He wants more. He had all the fish in the pond, and he still wants more. Meanwhile, hey guys, guys, you gotta be quiet. Back at the Big Bear's den, here we have Gopher and Mole, with Raven and Wren, all of Bear's friends are back there. They bake honey cakes and they decorate his lair. It's a springtime party for their good friend Bear. What are they doing to make a party for him? Decorating. They're decorating. They've got flowers. They're making cookies and honey cakes. Very good. Very good. Yes. But he doesn't fit in it anymore. Really? Bear rubs at his tummy. And he smells something <laughs> yummy, something he, very he yummy. So he can't and he oh. still wants more. So Bear sniffs and he snuffles as the sweet breeze blows. He romps to his home. He follows his nose. And his friends yell, hey, surprise. And he gets to his den. But the bear is so big. He's so big that he can't fit in. You were right. The bear wells, what luck? I am stuck, stuck, stuck in my own front door. Have you ever been so big that you couldn't fit in your own front door? No. No. He ate a lot today, hasn't he? Yeah. He was so hungry. So Mouse squeaks, oh, poor bear. He's wedged in too tight. <laughs> Hair tugs and raven pushes with all of their might. Urgh, urgh. 
Grr. And then Badger, he gets a stick and he pries so hard, oh, so hard, that Bear pops out oh, and he lands in his yard. How's he gonna go back in? I don't even know. So he lands in his yard. And since Bear is so wide, they decide to party outside. And all of that, Bear still wants more. Well, Bear, he opens presents and he gobbles honey cakes. He eats so much that his great big tummy aches. Oh. I think he might be. So now he snuggles in the grass and he snores big snores. He is full, full, full. But his friends, his friends want more. Why do they want more? They're hungry. Well, why are all of his friends hungry, do you think? Because he ate all the food. Buried all of the food. And he snores and snores and snores away. That is the end of our story. So, I want everybody to stand up. Stand up. And now, we're going to talk really quickly about what we're going to make today. We're going to do a little crafty thing after all of our story times and all of our birthday singing and all of our wiggling around. We are going to make a snack for bear. Yes, we are. A special snack for bear that I am about to show you in just a second. At every table, we have a background for bear. We also have bears, too. Now, what does this bear look like? Does he look maybe a little bit like the bear and bear wants more? It's because he is the bear and bear wants more. So we're going to feed our bear. We're going to give him some delightful things to snack on, like fish. We've got some fish for bear. We've got some strawberries for bear. Good eye. Ooh, tasty, tasty strawberries. Yum. And we should also have a pot of honey for bear. I think we do, or maybe we don't. Nope. You have a pot of honey for bear, but I unfortunately do not. So I want everyone to color in the food for Bear, to color in Bear, and to glue him onto this paper. And if you want to add some extra food, maybe your favorite food, if you want to draw your favorite food with Bear, you can do that too. So everyone find your adults. There's enough for four bears at every single table.